Welcome to Medical Student Life in Japan, a podcast is born. This is a 30-minute show and tell presentation with myself, Michael Blodgett, and a student from our university, Yuriko Daijo. I'll start the presentation and speak close to 10 minutes, then I'll pass it over to Yuriko, who will share the student perspective. Then finally, we'll move on to how we made the podcast. After our presentation, we'll open it up for questions and be glad to answer any of those. So first, uh, my name is Michael Blodgett. I am a full-time English lecturer here at Nara Medical University, a small medical college in the Kansai region. I teach first and second year medical and nursing students, which includes a mix of compulsory classes and advanced classes. Well, what are advanced classes? Seven years ago, about, our university was looking for a way to improve. Uh, they thought of many ideas, and one of those ideas was by improving the English programs in our college. The university president uh, decided uh, we are going to improve the English programs, and he hired a new professor, and that new professor uh, hired several teachers, including myself, and we started uh, this new program, which beyond the compulsory classes, now would include uh, advanced classes. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see this quote from our president, Nara Medical University is dedicated to developing the best clinical English program in the country. Whoa, a lot of pressure there. A um, lot of pressure, but we are ready for the challenge and uh, we look forward to little by little becoming the best uh, in the whole country. And I think we're getting close. Again, the advanced classes. Well, essentially they're non-credit elective English classes. We run these classes every weekday, Monday through Friday, uh, usually at the end of the day uh, when students are done with their compulsory courses. Um, they have all kinds of different uh, subjects and they change little by little each year, uh, depending on student interest or the kinds of programs we think would be appropriate for medical students. So some classes tend to be more communication focused or more fun, uh, relaxed, and some could be a little more serious, uh, devoted to research uh, in English or clinical practices in English. Um, I happen to teach one advanced class that uh, prepares students for an international research uh, clerkship program. Uh, this course is basically a communication course to get them comfortable communicating in English uh, and also learning a little bit about culture uh, overseas. Um, this program offers a second year students who apply, um, not all students, but a select few are accepted into this program. And they'll have a chance to go overseas uh, to countries like the US, um, some in Europe and even Asia in places like Singapore, for example. Uh, however, the pandemic uh, changes everything, as uh, many of you know, and uh, we suddenly were in a situation where all of our compulsory classes went online um, in April of last year. And as a department, we rushed to figure out how could we go online and also offer classes that give chances to our students to improve their English, uh, to communicate in English, and remember our goal to be number one, uh, in clinical English in Japan. So we were really busy doing that. And at the same time, the International Research Clerkship Program was canceled and many of our advanced classes were also uh, being canceled because we had to focus on these compulsory classes. Uh, however, um, after the first semester during the summer break, I was thinking, hey, maybe there's a way I could reimagine the advanced class um, for the students who want to do the research clerkship? And is there a way that I could give them some of the same experiences they might have while overseas? So I thought of a class that could maybe create opportunities for regular English practice, um, some way to communicate with people overseas, a uh, way to share ideas about uh, Japanese uh, culture, and most importantly, let's have uh, some fun uh, we are in a pandemic and 
uh, teachers and students alike felt stressed and, and maybe a little isolated. So podcasts, are you familiar with uh, podcasts? Uh, I became familiar with them about 12 years ago when I moved uh, back to Japan from the States. And I was feeling a little homesick, uh, missing America, American culture, and especially media, uh, movies and music and things like that. And uh, I had bought a, a phone and on the phone, there was an app for podcast, which I hadn't really known about, but I started searching and I found this podcast. Uh, Mike and Tom eat snacks. It's it's a it's a very funny podcast with two American uh, comedic actors, basically eating snacks and talking about it. The premise is a bit ridiculous, but it was really enjoyable and and um, you know quite comforting to listen to something like this. So I started searching for others, and I found other comedy podcasts and podcasts about sports, which I like, and and health. And then I thought, hey. Uh, maybe I could study Japanese using a podcast. And later on, I found one for that. And then that got me to thinking, is there a way for my students to use podcasts for their English study? Uh, for example, uh, the BBC Learning English had a podcast and there's many, many more. So with that, I created this class for second year students, uh, communication, podcasts, and podcasting. I quickly uh, set up a class using Edmodo, which would be kind of our uh, virtual classroom, and uh, we could meet uh, using a Zoom. What were going to be the goals for this uh, class? Well, I was hoping to introduce podcasts to students. I wasn't sure if they were familiar or not, so I thought I would teach them about what podcasts are and, and start to introduce uh, some episodes. Um, we would hopefully maybe listen to some, you know, in or outside of class, and then when we met, we could discuss the podcast. And ultimately, I was thinking it would be great if we could create our very own podcast. So class was set up. It was OK. And I was ready to go. Uh, I was able to quickly advertise it to our university. And tons of students, I mean, one student signed up. But she is an amazing student. So she signed up, she joined the class, and I started teaching her about podcasts. She hadn't heard of them before. And we started listening to some, and she started choosing some for her, her own study. And then we thought, let's create our own podcast. And we came up with the idea, uh, Medical Student Life in Japan. And the idea was this podcast would give an up-close view of being a medical student in Japan. Um, could be informative about studying medicine or medical topics in Japan. And also, you know, have a little bit of fun, you know, conversations and perspectives about Japan and Japanese culture. And the audience, we weren't sure. Uh, we thought maybe medical students in other countries or people curious about Japan, or maybe even other students who were studying English. So here it was, we created our podcast, we uh, created some cover art, um, as you can see here, a picture of uh, Nara, and uh, I wrote out a brief introduction of what our podcast would be, and we got started. So, uh, medical student student life in Japan. It was going to be it was a one semester class, and in that time, we created eleven original episodes. Um, unbelievably, we had listeners from over thirty countries even America. Thanks, mom. <laughs> um, and uh, listeners from all age groups, from all age groups. Uh, as you can see here, uh, includes very young listeners and even very old listeners. And, uh, you know, especially it seems like a lot of uh, listeners from the age group of students. So that's from me, uh, but enough about the teacher. Let me pass it over to Yudiko and she will take it away and she will give you a great idea from the student perspective. Okay, thank you for coming and listening here today. I'm Yuriko Daijo, a third year medical student at Nara Medical University. Now I'm learning experimental medicine such as pharmacology, microbiology, um, and so on. But anyway, 
I have a dream of becoming a doctor in the US in the future. So since I was a first year medical student, I've learning and practicing conversational English at home and at school. Plus now I'm working hard to pass USMLE, United States Medical License Examination, which includes three steps. And I'm going to pass all of them during my school days, aiming to get residency in the US in the future. Well, by the way, there is one of the greatest programs in my school. It is research clerkship. Second year medical students can go and research at a lab in Japan or in other countries. And as you can imagine, I was looking forward to going abroad in an attempt to improve my English skills and um, experience different culture. But the clerkship was canceled due to the pandemic, unfortunately. That being said, Advanced English classes for this research clerkship was held by a very nice and creative teacher, Michael. He created a re replacement class, changing the content. It is about making a podcast. Then what is a podcast? As Michael said, it is a kind of audio materials with many topics. For example, music, movies, travel, food, and things like that. You can get a lot of useful information in a specific field. And of course, you can listen to it just for fun. The strong point um, of a podcast, I think, is that it's easily accessible anytime and anywhere because you can, you can download and listen to it offline. On top of that, a podcast is created in a variety of languages from Japanese to English and everything in between. So it's also helpful to learn other languages. Personally, I sometimes listen to a podcast of NHK World Japan and BBC News to learn English. Let me introduce some topics of a podcast. The name of it is Medical Student Life in Japan, by the way. Most of the topics are about life in Nara Medical University. For example, entrance ceremony, classes, club activities, part-time jobs, volunteering, and things like that. But on the other hand, some are about Japanese culture, such as vending machines which is very popular episode actually. As well as that, each episode has its own different introduction and some are about trips to some prefectures in Japan because both Michael and I uh, really like to go on trips to uh, many parts in Japan such as Shizuoka prefecture, Nagasaki prefecture and so on. On top of that, we sometimes invited a student, uh, a senior of English club. And I've um, once interviewed him and it was actually challenging to ask some questions and lead in a podcast. Through my experience, I realized many point, many strong points of a podcast. Let me introduce three of them. The first point is that we can record on Zoom. Now the, patient, the number of patients with coronavirus in Japan is still growing and students at Nara Medical University sometimes go to school to take in-person class, but on other days, um, students take online lessons at home. So there is a small number of students in class or the class is completely online. That being said, we can make a podcast together thanks to the technology. Um, 
we make uh make some stories on zoom and later michael edit them adding some sound effects and background music plus it's a great opportunity to familiarize ourselves with some recording devices and broadcasting systems. The second point is a podcast is very creative way to learn English. Every time we make any podcast, I always try to prepare and memorize specific vocabularies. For example, before I um, made a new episode of my journey to Oita Prefecture during my school spring vacation, I checked some terms for texture of food, transportation, and things like that in an attempt to describe more details of my trip exactly. I think it's a good opportunity to um, acquire new language, new words. As well as that, um, making a podcast is more practical way to learn English because usually we have a little chat for warming up and record lively conversation. Um, it's challenging to make a quick response to a native speaker, Michael, but I believe this is good practice to talk in English at a natural speed. On top of that, um, we can express ourselves to the world via podcasts. Lastly, we can connect with people all over the world. Um, now, it's almost impossible to go abroad, but we can connect with many people from different countries via our podcasts. For example, we can see listeners data on a certain platform named Anchor. Um, it shows listeners nationality, gender, age, and so on. And I know that now we have listeners from over 30 countries, which is amazing. They are from the US, the UK, India, Norway, Macedonia, and so on. Surprisingly, we also received some comments from listeners, which is really motivating to me. Actually, recently we contacted one of them who is also a medical student in Cuba, and we are going to interview her in our future podcast. Since last year, I've taken this class and it still continues. Luckily, we got, if we've got several new members in our class this year, and now we are recording introductions of new students. And every student showed his own unique sides, such as hobbies, experiences, and so on. And I believe that Showing new members' personalities in a podcast will definitely um, enrich the content of our podcast and it will get more fun and interesting and maybe we can get more listeners from other countries. And plus, as I said, I'm very, I'm looking forward to interviewing medical students abroad. I want to fulfill these goals um, this year with new members and Michael. That's it. Now back to Michael. Okay, thanks, Yudiko. Great job. All right, now let's get into how did we make the podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation until now, but I'd love to briefly teach you how we made the podcast so that you could do something similar at your own uh, institution. In fact, I think it's a great idea if you try it out. So uh, I started out at zero. I listened to some podcasts. I enjoyed that part. I had no idea how to actually make a podcast. So I did what many people would do. I went to Google and YouTube and did some searches and got some information. And what I realized after that was the easiest way to make a podcast was to sign up for Anchor. Anchor is a website where you can make a podcast. And 
Anchor is great uh, because it's free. So you don't have to worry about money. You just go to the website, sign up, simple as that. And it was very user friendly. So the directions were very clear. Uh, I was able to figure out what I needed to do to actually record the podcast and make the podcast and then for it to be uh, published. Um, it even includes some features, uh, which makes sense because it's a website for making a podcast, which you could add music or sounds um, to make your podcast more appealing or fun. And it also had a few feature that allows for voice messages, uh, which you know, Yudiko mentioned we did get some voice messages, which was very fun and, and motivating um, that our audience could contact us. And um, the greatest thing is within the site, just a click of a few buttons and your podcast will be distributed across multiple platforms. So for example, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, which is really, really popular now, in fact, owns Anchor and, and many others. Um, so. Anchor is what I used, and now how did how to make a podcast? So one, you got to record it. Two, you have to edit it, and then finally publish it. And there it is; it's out there in the internet for all the people to listen to. So where can you record? Well, you could uh, directly through the Anchor site. So there is a feature to record, um, and I did try that, and that was okay. But there is a small caveat I'll mention a little bit later. Or you could use your smartphone, which was pretty convenient for us. Uh, I use the iPhone uh, voice memo application and quickly record on my phone. And then I could, you know, upload that to my computer um, or to the uh, anchor site. Also Zoom, uh, as we're using now, you know, of course, you can record your meetings. So if we were to meet students online, uh, we could just record our Zoom session and you could uh, just uh, keep the audio uh, for the podcast. Uh, with what? Well, again, you could use the microphone from your device. So if you record on your computer, there's a microphone there or your, your smartphone. And that was fine. And we did that for a while and had some great success and the sound was okay. Uh, but little by little, as we were getting into this, we wanted to improve it more and more. And so uh, I upgraded to a really nice uh, microphone. Uh, in fact, this one, the Blue Yeti USB microphone. And this is great. Uh, it's got great sound and it makes the podcast even better. And it's also got multiple features which allow for someone to do a speech or interview. Uh, next, you have editing. Um, you could, this is the caveat I mentioned. It was quite clunky to do in Anchor. Uh, it was hard to delete additional sound at the beginning that we maybe didn't like or, or at the end. Um, so instead, I just recorded on my phone and then I would put it into QuickTime Player and edit there. Uh, I also used Audacity, which is a free uh, software, um, which is great for uh, recording a sound and editing sound. Um, you could do a lot of uh, features to improve your sound quality. and. Uh, finally, I started getting into GarageBand, which if you have an Apple computer, uh, usually they have GarageBand, which also was a nice way to uh, edit sound. And eventually we got to our introduction. Welcome to Medical Student Life in Japan, a podcast created by a teacher and a group of students. And you get some sound like that. You could layer in some background sound, which was fun. Uh, finally, uh, publishing. Very simple process. This will go quickly. Um, you just go back to the Anchor site and you click a new episode. And in that you upload your audio files and you can add you know, uh, transition sounds and the like. And finally, um, you, know, you included episode information like a title and a description. And there's a space for that on the site. And then you just have to click publish now. Uh, as you can see here, you click that button and then there it is, uh, one of our recent episodes, episode 18 now. Um, and it'll look like this. This is the public site. You'll see that it's covered on several platforms. I've even added, if you'd like, you can add a YouTube channel where people can listen to the podcast there. So uh, that is great. And then you, the fun thing is you can track the data after publishing the episode. Um, all kinds of fun data on the Anchor site, which includes listener numbers, 
um, where they're listening from, their age and the gender, um, and even what kind of platform they're using to listen or not. Okay, uh, thanks for joining our presentation. I'll wrap it up here, and then we'll leave some time for some questions. Thank you.